This week on the show, we have reality star Chris Hahn, who is a contestant in the new show Dated and Related on Netflix. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of understanding that you can change the way you feel about any situation you perceive as negative by simply changing your perspective on it. Have you ever gone into a situation dreading it even before it happens? For example, dreading a job interview or a networking opportunity because of the nerves it would give you getting out of your comfort zone. But what if a quick change in your perspective can change your mindset from dreading it to actually being excited about it? Rather than focusing your energy on how scary or nerve wracking it could be, Tell yourself it's an exciting opportunity to showcase your personality and all the skills you've been working on. Here's some examples. Change the dread of a job interview to the mindset of being excited that you get the opportunity to showcase your amazing skills. Or for example, a networking event as an exciting opportunity for you to tell more people about what you're passionate about and to build your network. Turning dread and nerves into excitement and joy can be done by simply viewing the situation in a positive way that is working out in your favor. As Dan Brown quotes, sometimes a change of perspective is all it takes to see the light. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break. I feel from watching the show, you went in really confident, you and Jason, and then over the time, like over a period of time, you kind of started doubting the process. You can kind of see that maybe your confidence kind of withered a little bit. So tell us about that and why that happened. So that's a, that's a good question as well. And it's, there's a lot to this. So the number one thing is, you know, you're in this villa with people. And before that, we actually had to quarantine in France in a hotel for two weeks and we didn't have our phone. We couldn't leave the hotel. So like, you're kind of in lockdown. You're kind of like psyching yourself out. You don't know what's going to happen. And we didn't actually even know we were filming or actually going to be part of the main cast until two days prior to them actually filming. Oh, wow. So, you know, those two days before, you know, I kind of had to like get myself ready and everything like that. And then when you get to the villa, they also take your phone and you can't leave the villa until you actually get kicked off. Oh, so wow. I think for me at first, like I was really, I was excited and I was confident. And then, you know, two weeks in, you know, you kind of get a little discouraged just because, you know, you're on schedule, you're on their schedule. So, you know, they tell you when to wake up, they tell you when to eat, they tell you when to go to sleep. And, you know, you have no control over everything, over anything. Wardrobe provided by H&M. Next up on the show, we have reality star Chris Hahn from the Netflix show Dated and Related. Chris, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? I'm doing awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Well, thanks for being here. I was just telling you that I binged watched the whole show. Um, I loved it. I love these kind of shows and I'm excited to talk to you about your experience. So let's get into it. Why did you decide to audition for the show? So this is going to be funny. Actually, my cousin Jason, who I went on the show with, he applied for the show for me without me even knowing it. Mm -hmm. Oh. No. <laughs> so I was, this is ironic because I was actually just, at, I was at the mall, just minding my own business. And he calls me and he's like, oh, it's like a three-way call. And I was like, okay, whatever. And I answer and they're just like, oh, hey, Chris, like I'm on the phone with Jason. Uh, we're like talking about this reality dating show. We want to know if you're interested. And I was like, uh, okay, like whatever. Like, and they're like, oh, so what day is like a good day for you? And I was just like, I guess we could just like we could do it whenever like tomorrow I guess yeah so I'm like whatever you know let's do it I didn't really think I would ever like be on a reality dating show but I was like I might as well give it a shot you know sometimes the best things are unexpected right we don't expect yeah. it <laughs> and that's always the best when we know what's gonna happen it's not always the best when we don't know it huh? kind of works out right <laughs> yeah no so I was I was excited for the opportunity and I'm, I'm happy I obviously I'm happy that Jason actually you know went out and did that for me because you know, I wouldn't be here, so I'm excited. I'm, I'm grateful. Very nice. And for our viewers that don't know, tell us a little bit about the premise of the show, Dated and Related. So yeah, that's like the main question. Everyone's like, Dated <laughs> and Related? Are you like dating your relative? Like what's going on here? <laughs> so pretty much to narrow it down, you know, we have seven, seven uh, groups. So me and Jason, we were the only cousin pair. 
and then uh, we have brother and sisters, we have twin sisters, we have twin brothers, and the whole awkward dynamic going on is pretty much helping, you know, and being a team and helping your other relative to find love and navigating through all that and just giving advice and uh, pretty much being essentially a wingman slash wing woman, I guess you would say. Yes, and you and your cousin definitely were very united. <laughs> I feel like Jason yeah. really was like your hype person. And yeah. you know, <laughs> I feel like you guys really were like a, a solid team. Um, this is such an unconventional way of finding love. So, you know, how was the process for you doing this with Jason as well? So, Jason's my cousin, but he's also my best friend. You know, my right hand man, the yin to my yang. We are just like the most dynamic duo. Um, if I'm ever gonna go out with someone and try to find love or try to, you know, even just be with a girl, I'm gonna definitely, you know, have him by my side because he knows me well. I know him better than anyone. And, you know, we're just such a good team. There's no one else I would rather have by my side because me and him, we just kill it together. He is, like I said, my best friend. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't rather, I wouldn't want to be on there with anyone else. So I'm, I'm happy that me and him got to explore this adventure together for sure. Yeah, and once you knew the premise of the show, were you nervous at all, you know, with the cameras and, you know, everything? Were you nervous? So, yeah, I was definitely <laughs> nervous. I did not know what to expect. Um, I was kind of, we were both kind of in the dark. We didn't really know what was going on. And we didn't know until like three months before we were supposed to film that we were getting flown out to France. So it was such a last minute thing. And it just like kind of took me by surprise because I was like, we, I guess, okay, so we, we did good enough in the interview process and we made it and we're going to France. And I was like, all right, so like, I started thinking to myself, like, what is going to go on? Like, what's going to happen? How do I go about this? So I was so nervous, not going to lie, you know, as to what was going to come. But as soon as we kind of just got, you know, on film and on set and, you know, you kind of just adjust accordingly, I kind of started to, to calm down and then we both got pretty uh, pretty confident in front of the camera. Even though there's tons of cameras everywhere, it's kind of, you don't even know, you know, what to expect or what angles they're gonna shoot. So that was like, kind of like, uh, kind of caught you off guard because you have no idea what's going on. Mm -hmm. But um, once we got comfortable, you know, we uh, we really, really meshed and uh, we blossomed in a sense. So um, yeah. yeah, I was nervous, but once you get in there and you get used to it, it's kind of, it's not that bad. It's not as bad as everyone thinks. Yeah, I was going to say, I feel like with the cameras everywhere, are you more conscious of what you're saying or are you kind of more unfiltered? You just kind of ignore the cameras. How was that? How was that? So, for you? so that's <laughs> such a good question because, you know, growing up, I was such a shy person and I didn't really like come out of my shell until like after high school. And I started like bartending and serving. And that's when I actually like found myself and, you know, really just owned up to who I am because I'm kind of like a goofy, like, like a laid back chill person and, uh, you know, it was funny because I was definitely reserved at first, you know, like when I was walking in, I was like, oh, I gotta be careful what I say. But then at the same time in the back of my head, I was like, I can't be anyone but myself. So I really just had to own who I was and just be me, you know, like I wouldn't want to be anyone else. I wouldn't want to be perceived as anyone else. So I just went in confident in who I am and just owned it. And that's all you really can do. You know, you have to just be positive, be confident, and you just, you can't, you can't think about it and get in your own head. Cause then you're just gonna, you're, just not, you're not gonna look good and you're just kind of gonna you know, set yourself out. So yeah. you just gotta be confident. And that's what I did. And I was just, I was just myself and that's really it. Yeah, I think that's great advice. You know, that that's actually the best advice is just to be yourself, to go in, own who you are and things mm -hmm. work out for you. And also I like that you said overthinking because you know what, once you overthink, things just go downhill. So it's better yeah. just to be present, to own it. I really like that. I feel from watching the show, you went in really confident, you and Jason, and then over the time, like over a period of time, you kind of started doubting the process. You can kind of see that maybe your confidence kind of withered a little bit. So tell us about that and why that happened. So that's a, that's a good question as well. And it's there's a lot to this. So the number one thing is, you know, you're in this villa with people. And before that, we actually had to quarantine in France in a hotel for two weeks and we didn't have our phone, we couldn't leave the hotel. So like, you're kind of in lockdown, you're kind of like psyching yourself out, you don't know what's gonna happen. And we didn't actually even know we were filming or actually gonna be part of the main cast until two days prior to them actually filming. Oh wow. So, you know, those two days before, you know, I kind of had to like get myself ready. 
and everything like that. And then when you get to the villa, they also take your phone and you can't leave the villa until you actually get kicked off. Oh, so wow. I think for me at first, like I was really, I was excited and I was confident. And then, you know, two weeks in, you know, you kind of get a little discouraged just because, you know, you're on schedule, you're on their schedule. So, you know, they tell you when to wake up, they tell you when to eat, they tell you when to go to sleep. And, you know, you have no control over everything, over anything. So also the main thing for me was, you know, obviously, you know, the second episode, we almost got kicked out, but they didn't kick us out. Mm -hmm. They kicked the, uh, the Bejors off and, and then they kicked Diamond and Dion off and then they kept bringing in just more guys. <laughs> Yeah. And so by the time, like, I kind of stopped, stopped losing my, like, I started losing my confidence was when, you know, it was like nine guys and five girls. Yeah. And everyone was kind of already, like, teamed up. So there was just, like, no opportunities for me. Yeah. And that's, that's definitely kind of, like, upset me a little bit because I'm just like, there's not really much we could do. You know, I could go out and, like, shoot my shot and, and you know, kind of say whatever to anybody, but it just didn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't make sense, you know, yeah, yeah. which I actually did, you know, we were, me and Jason were actually like <laughs> trying still, even after we got denied Yeah. and, you know, they didn't show all that, but you know, it, it definitely, it definitely took a little bit of a toll on me. And I was, I'm a very active person. I like to like go out and try different things. And I wanted to like go for a walk or like go, go for a workout. Yeah. which you know, they allowed us to do. They allowed us to like go for a workout, but they only had like bands. They didn't really have any like weight <laughs> for me. I couldn't, and I wanted to like go for a walk down the street and they're like, no, you can't, you can't leave the house. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, oh, so you're just like, kind of like trapped in. Yeah. And that's just like, I kind of, that, that's when it got to me. And I was just like, oh, like I'm just, I'm not as excited to be here as I was in the beginning. Cause at first I was ecstatic. I was so excited. Yeah. I was like, yes, like we're doing this. We're in France. We have a beautiful view of Cannes and yeah, I mean, it just got discouraging at the end, which is unfortunate. Mm -hmm. um, I think if I did end up finding someone, you know, I would have definitely blossomed more and would have stayed confident because I would have felt like there was more of a reason to, for me to stay. But it definitely got a little bit in my head with the whole um, girl to guy ratio. And that was uh, that was unfortunate. But yeah, you know, I still stayed strong and um, I definitely did my thing. I, I wasn't as discouraged as they portrayed me, actually. Yeah. Well, I mean, that is discouraging. I mean, you see more guys coming into the house. That's going to be discouraging. And also, yeah. if you're not finding a genuine match or someone you genuinely like, of course, that's going to be yeah. discouraging when it's a dating show. So, I mean, I completely yeah. feel like that's relatable. Anyone would feel like mm. that. I'm a big believer that family over everything. So kind of how did this strengthen your bond with Jason and being through the process with him? So, yeah, I mean, a lot has gone on since the show. And uh, we both have always wanted to move out to Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And so six months ago, me and Jason, we picked everything up, dropped everything at home, and we drove cross country. And we now live in Los Angeles, California, which is where we've always wanted to be. And uh, we're doing really good. We're making a lot of progress. And we're just, you know, meeting a lot of people, doing our thing, having fun in the process. And we're really just kind of finding our niche right now. Mm -hmm. um, for me personally, I was always just undecisive of what I wanted to do with my life. And, um, you know, Jason and I, we really just have a really good bond. And, uh, you know, he, he lifts me up when I'm down and vice versa. And we're just such a good duo. You know, us living out here together has just, you know, we've grown so much more than we ever thought we would be. And, you know, we're gonna continue doing our thing and i can't see us slowing down or us separating like we're like we, we don't even get in fights like we like mm -hmm. i don't even know he's like he's like he's literally like my brother and yeah. you know we're just such a good duo i wouldn't want to be out here with anyone else you know he really he really uh guides me through and you know i tell like we're just such we're so good at you know really just complimenting each other and kind of guiding each other to where we really want to be because we know each other so well and we look at things at such a different perspective, that really helps us, you know, along the way and in the process to just, you know, get us to where we want to go and help us achieve our goals. Mm -hmm. And speaking about the process, what has this process taught you about handling uncertainty? <sighs> so, I mean, really about handling uncertainty is like, you never know what's going to happen. You never, you don't, you can't, you know, predict the future. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So you have to just live in the moment and try to enjoy the present, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's hard. It's so easy to get discouraged 
you know, in this life. But like how I perceive it is you just have to really just go after what you want, be confident in who you are and don't let other people's opinions dictate anything about you because what other people say about you means more to them than it does about you. And mm -hmm. you know, you really just have to do what you want to do. You have to go after your dreams because life is so short and like, we don't know how it's going to end, but one day it is going to end. So you really just have to put your foot down and shoot and, and do what you want to do. Go after your goals. You know, it's so easy to get caught up in all the BS. It really is. And, you know, all I could really say is own up to who you are as a person. Don't let other people, you know, get under your skin because I mean, it is easy, but you just got to put the put the put your foot on the gas pedal and go after what you want. Like you got to do that. And if, if there's anything I learned about being uncertain, it's just like you just you can't predict anything and you got to just do what you want to do and be yourself. And that's all you could do and just be confident doing it. Yeah, absolutely. Life is short. You just have to go for what you want. And, you know, when you look back, you'll be so proud of yourself because you're going to say, like, I did everything I wanted to do. And I did like that you said that, you know, you know what? What other people think of you is really none of your business, right? <laughs> you yeah. have to focus on yourself. So I like exactly. That. And, you know, I created this platform to uplift, to inspire. So I want to ask you, you know, for anyone out there, you know, because obviously being on a reality show, takes a lot of risks. So I want to ask you for anyone that's out there looking for love, but not able to find it or scared to take that leap. Maybe they're not putting themselves out there. What would you say to encourage them? So in my perspective, you know, I'm never really looking for a relationship. However, I'm always open to it. You know, that's not the, my first priority because my first priority is my career and, you know, doing what I love and following my passion and my dream. And I think that's what you have to put first. Because, you know, relationships and love, you know, it's a touchy subject and it's, it's, it's so easy to just, you know, get in your head about it. But what you really have to do is you, you just can't be scared of, you know, getting rejected. One thing I learned is, you know, say you go out to a bar and you're a guy and you're, you know, you're really into a girl and you're scared to go up and say something, you know, you miss a thousand percent of the shots that you don't take. And People are just so scared of getting rejected nowadays. You know, it is tough and it's discouraging, but you know, say you do get rejected, it has nothing to do about you. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't know what that person's going through. You don't know what's going on in their life. And so people are just so scared of going out and getting shot down. But realistically, like if you, if you just keep doing your thing and you keep going out there and putting yourself out there, you no, know, you will find someone. You know, and I think if you try to force that, it will never happen. But if you just do your thing and have fun and say you go out to the bar and you just see someone that you're interested in, just go up to them, strike a conversation, say hi. You know, everyone's so scared of, of getting rejected. And I think that's part of the problem. And that used to be my, my problem as well. But once you kind of just own up to who you are as a person and you just you just got to be, you know, you, you can't care. You got to stop caring about getting rejected and you just really have to just shoot your shot. And I think it's, if you just keep doing that and you're going to meet the right person and you know, that's all you really got to do. And me personally, I think you just, you got to put yourself first and uh, I think love will follow you if you do that. Yeah, absolutely. No, no risk, no reward. Right. So yeah, exactly. the answer will always be no, if you don't ask. So I, yeah. I think that's, it's as simple as that. So I think that that's very true advice. And Chris, what are you currently working on? So we're working on a few things. Uh, I have been trying to, I've been slowly getting into the, the fashion world a little bit, um, doing a little bit of modeling. Um, I do also really want to get into scripted work. Um, me and Jason are currently working on writing our own scripts. So that is in the process. It is however changing day by day. So um, not exactly sure how it's going to, you know, how it's going to come out, but we're super confident in it and uh, we're working really hard on that and just, you know, really trying to, you know, ride this reality wave for now. And then we're going to really start hitting acting pretty hard. We're going to do more acting classes. You know, we're really just going to put ourselves out there. Um, right now, we're just networking as much as we can, you know, just trying to enjoy ourselves out here in Los Angeles and uh, pretty much go from there. You know, we don't 
you can't really think too far ahead. So we're pretty much just being present as we can and uh, taking it day by day, doing what we do best. Living large and, you know, our time will come. We're working super hard every day, podcasts, you know, whole bunch of photo shoots, you know, meeting people, getting ourselves out there, getting our face out there. And I think that's what we have to do to uh, to get to where we want to be. We even were even talking to a few producers about possibly hosting our own show, which is definitely on my list. Kind of like how Melinda from Two Out the Handle hosted Data and Related. I think we would really do, we would really love to do that. And I think we would be great for that. Um, so that's definitely on the agenda as well. But as of now, just working hard, doing our thing and uh, just grinding. Mm, very nice. Well, I see big things in your future. I definitely see acting. Chris, thank you so much for being on the show today. Congratulations with all your success as well. And uh, so come much. back on the show and tell us about your uh, your future project. <laughs> I would love to. I would really love to. I'm looking forward to that. Thank you so much for having me. And it was, it was awesome speaking to you and, and all that. So I really appreciate the opportunity. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook. Hey, you can fly higher than